Charlie had this basin, and and the story is that he was ranging horses on Mahogany Mountain, and uh, Jake Bussell was grazing sheep on Charlie's land, and somebody went and told Charlie about it, and he came down here and tried to run Jake off and had an argument with him, and Jake shot him. And Jake went, then went to the marshal and told him, you gotta arrest me, I killed Charlie, Spanish Charlie. Uh, the other story is that, that Jake Mussel was a rancher and Spanish Charlie was running sheep across his place to get him to water. And uh, Jake told him several times not to do that. Then he came up here to confront Charlie and Charlie ended up getting shot. 1887, I think is what it says on the stone. This is, this is the border of Charlie's property. And that rock wall was probably four foot tall at one time. And it would have taken a man a lifetime to do that. So he had a bunch of labor. Those rocks aren't little. Those are heavy rocks. He had a bunch of labor built that for him. Probably Chinese laborers. Chinese or possibly Hawaiian. And you were saying that the Hawaiians were brought in here. Yeah, the Hawaiian, Captain Cook brought the Hawaiians over here. And, uh, and they... Uh, and they worked for the was it French Canadian fur trading company, and uh, and then when the when the fur trapping ran out, uh, they either went home or or they stayed in Idaho. There's still one family in Idaho, I understand. I don't know where exactly, but I heard that there was one family still in Idaho. But Oregon had a law that said they couldn't own land, so they went back to Hawaii. Captain Cook went back there, too, and the king killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I really have to thank my friend, Ken Stanzel. You can find him on YouTube, Chuck Stanzel. He took me out on basically a full day ATV tour to find Spanish Charlie Basin. And so we're walking through here, and the houses are pretty well preserved. He's got a dugout that he would have used, as well as the ranch hands. And it's unknown whether or not Spanish Charlie was a herder or whether he was a cattleman or a, a horse raiser but what is really known is that basically he died in this conflict the sheepman cattleman war and it was basically a casualty of a larger kind of idea that the cattlemen didn't like the sheepmen and this was also considered a justifiable shooting because it's most commonly accepted that a sheep herder shot spanish charlie because spanish charlie you know, argued with the sheep herder and said, I'm going to get my gun. And he goes back to his cabin and the sheep herder freaks out and shoots him in the back. And because this is sheepman country, the sheep herder was let off the hook. I thought it was closer to his... Hey, you got us within a couple years. <laughs> the coyotes hauled one of the boots off. And just like the cemetery filled with unknown graves down in Oakley, where the two sheep herders who were killed in the Deep Creek murders are buried, I also found quite a few unknown or unmarked graves, piles of rock in the same general canyon area in Hawaii County, not necessarily in Spanish Charlie Basin, but a good, you know, 30 minute hour drive away from Spanish Charlie's grave leads me to think that either shepherds or cattlemen or outlaws went into the canyon and died and were buried basically where they died. It's at a spot that a lot of cattlemen would have been at. It kind of looks like cowboy boots. He might have... Uh, oh, you see, see peeing? He might have black leather. This is home. This is Ed Holmes. 1889. And then these are more modern. 
2008. Annette Holmes was killed by Indians. Supposedly she was killed by Indians while standing in the doorway of the rock. And the rock would be sort of the original stagecoach end. And apart from the sheepmen and cattlemen war of this part of the country, I kind of wanted to also go over, because Ken Stanzel was very interesting with the local history, some of the things that just happened in and around Hawaii County. A lot of this was happening at the time over the border and in Oregon, and in the same general area. And you don't really realize you've even gone into Oregon, but these scenes now are around the old ghost town of Rockville. Here also is buried Joe Monahan, a trans cowboy, born a woman in the early 1800s, migrated out here in the 1850s, and died in 1904, I believe. But I put out an entirely different video just for Joe Monahan. But out here you have your good share of outlaws, lynchings, vigilantes, Silver City Gold Rush Tales. It's a really fascinating area of the country. Took the rocks to Jordan Valley. They were going to build another hotel, and they never did. But, uh... Were there any other famous kind of highwaymen along the road here? Chief Nampa Bigfoot. So Native American kind of raids? I, I'm thinking he was, but I think he was educated in uh, in England or something. Anyway, he was a highway man, and he had uh, he had a bunch of people working for him, and they they'd rob stages and freighters and shit, anything. And supposedly, his loot is buried out here or hidden out here somewhere. I love buried treasure <laughs> stories. You gotta go looking for it. I know I know where there's a cave that I have that I haven't had the nerve to go into because I because it's goes like that. There's a trail around the edge but it goes like that and I didn't want to go out there if I didn't have somebody along with me. Just a few days ago in Hawaii County I was told by Ken Stanel about Chief Bigfoot who was kind of an outlaw and here's a statue of him in front of Old Fort Boise claiming that he was about as big as this statue. He killed and terrified this area from 1856 to 1868 when he was ambushed and killed with 16 bullets. His death was never reported, so for about a decade afterwards, travelers imagined they saw him hiding behind bushes and feared for their lives. He was a really famous figure in this part of the world, and uh, apparently he still has a treasure hiding out there somewhere, and no one's been able to find it yet. Works, and this is the old Rockville Hotel. Yeah. The posse here stayed looking they for. Stayed overnight here, and 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 during the night they heard that buckboard go by, and so they headed that way the next morning looking for him. And, and they would have. They built this here on the road from Oregon over to Silver City. This was uh, between Boise and Silver City. It came around and went. Through French John Hill. Yeah, French John Hill is over here. We'll we'll go up there. Joe, in fact, something I didn't tell you. Some people thought that maybe Joe was involved in a bank robbery or something like that. Uh, the robber disappeared and Joe turned up about the same. Anyway, uh, Joe uh, Monahan settled in this area and was a wrangler well known for the ability to break horses and uh, worked for a lot of ranchers around here ranched as a wrangler wiry little guy small hands but could rope as well as anybody and when uh, in those days when somebody died if it was a woman the woman prepared them for burial and if it was a guy the, the men prepared them for Burial. Well, son of a gun, Joe was a woman. Uh, Joe, Josephine Monahan lived her life a man. Uh, supposedly, 
she sent money to a boy in California from time to time. So it's thought that maybe she had a son down there. It's deteriorated a lot since the last time I was here. It won't be it won't be standing in another couple of years. And when did they move in? Huh? When did the Johnstone family move in? Probably the 1850s, 1870s, somewhere in there. You said they were sheep herders. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, they were they were big sheep herders, but they're all in cattle now. Uh, that family, they're. Their boys were my age, and now Alan's son is doing most of it. I think Brian still, I don't know if Brian's got any boys working or not, but uh, but Alan's son is uh, still still working there in the valley, and he, he has cattle in there a lot in the summertime, but then I think, or maybe, maybe in the wintertime and in the summertime, but just, uh, the and, and every rancher in the country uses that loading chute. They herd their cattle in here and load load them up. I saw saw them loading cattle one time, and I think every cowboy was a woman. And you were saying that back in the 50s and 60s, you'd see ranchers throwing sheepmen through the uh, window at the bar. Yeah, yeah. Would you say there was a lot of animosity? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't that bad when I was a kid. You know, it was worse. You know, generations before, but it was. Uh, but but they they had some fights. 